Welcome home, y'all. Um, we are happy to have you today, um, just like every week. Um, but this week, man, we, God, it's been such a good week. Um, we are so excited to be here. Uh, whether you guys are joining us online, joining us in person, whether you guys are going back and watching us later, uh, welcome home, welcome in, y'all. Uh, we love you, and we are happy to have you here this morning. Um, today is going to be a good one. Uh, I know Justin's got uh, some special people that are beginning up on a stage today to, to talk about their story and talk about what uh, God's done in their life. Uh, you, you probably don't know us that well, but today is hard because... Um, one of the parts that makes it hard is I have to take down a mask and a veil that I've been able to keep up, which is letting you into our story, even though Kaylee shared a little bit of our story on a, in a segment in a previous um, series. Um, typically in church, I get to keep on, hey, we've got it together, we're great, happy family, um, and, and my I've got all my stuff together, but um, more and more God is showing me that's not how he wants me to live, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so once again, he's showing me you're not going to be able to keep that mask on. Um, you claim that you want it to be real, so let's let's be real. But our, our story starts out with, um, you know, we, we met, we were madly in love, it was love at first sight. Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> you blame me. Um, and... And then we, like most people do, after you fall in love, you start making plans. And so part of our plan was, you know, obviously having a great career, um, uh, building a family, and then part of that family being lots of kids. Mm -hmm. And so even though that was our plan, um, there's a bigger bigger story taking place. Yep. And so um, we... And I guess I'll just jump right in. Just yeah, so you're I, don't know the I, that, I have one thing here. You just there okay. you go. There you go. There we go. I was finding trying to make a smooth transition. There's just not another okay. way to <laughs> there we go. safely yeah. grab another man's hand on stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, well played. Um, and so we started that journey with um, getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. Super excited. Um, we built a nursery, took all the pictures of the nurseries, made videos, and sent them to our family of, of our excitement. And then um, we we lost that one to a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I, I kind of chalk that up as we're part of a statistic. You know, you go start straight away to Google to find your answers, and it's statistics. This was just um, uh, bad luck, and we'll try again, and everything will be will be the way it should, um, but it was it was painful. But we were able to just displace that on this is this is part of life and part of statistics. And then we had Amelia, which was incredible. She's an amazing little girl, and that was our rainbow baby. Um, rainbow babies, for those that don't know, are after miscarriage if you have a successful pregnancy, and and obviously we have the joy of of life with her. Um, and then. Um, we wanted Mila to have somebody else to play with, and so we we went and got pregnant again, super excited, thinking this is the start of our, our plan and building our family. And um, it led to our, our third loss, which led to some second, second loss, third pregnancy, second loss. Um, led to some difficult times um, and led us down some different paths with mm -hmm. how we started dealing with some of our grief. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want me to continue or continue with the rest of it or, or pause. You can. Uh, there's something I read, and Kayla, you can talk about this if you want to, but you wrote a blog after one of the miscarriages, and I was reading it, and you said something in this that I would love for you to speak to, but you went in for the ultrasound, and I, I want to say it was third or fourth pregnancy, fourth pregnancy. pregnancy yeah. Okay. And the ultrasound tech said, did you not want to be pregnant? People are usually happy. And just talk about that experience um, for you. Yeah, that was rough. Um, so to a little context, that was the fifth pregnancy, but the fourth loss. And I've always had the feeling before 
it happened, even with the first one. Um, I didn't know what that feeling was, but I knew that there was something wrong. And it was, I'd had a history of an ectopic pregnancy, so I was very paranoid about, you know, keeping track of things. And I knew my body very well, and I was like, something's wrong. So I kind of pushed for that ultrasound, all while at the same time feeling like, okay, this if this is not meant to be, and having this prayer, which feels horrible, but having a prayer of, if this is not meant to be, please don't let us do what we've been doing, where we see a heartbeat, hear a heartbeat, and then we don't. Um, so we went into that ultrasound, and I kind of was prepping myself. Um, I think Cody can say the same thing of, okay, this is, you know, the numbers don't look okay. Like, I can prep for this. It's okay. And it's just hard to explain the, the anxiety that you have in those rooms after you've been through something like that. So I'm laying down, and I'm trying not to look at the screen, but then I look at the screen, and I see what I'm not supposed to see. I'm, I know, because I've been through this so many times, I know what I'm looking at, and I'm way behind. And um, so I'm like, okay, all right, I can handle this. And then the ultrasound tech just kind of was... You know, she's medical, and I'm medical too, so I give a lot of grace. But she was like, okay, well, here's the gestational sac, and then here's the heartbeat. And it just, like, all these flood of emotions of why. <laughs> like, and then being happy, and then feeling guilty that I'm not as happy as I should be. And um, knowing that this isn't okay, knowing that I'm going to go down the same path again, and we're going to go down the same path. And then the next words were, did you not want to be pregnant? People are usually happy. And so I just kind of broke at that point because you're already judging yourself for how you feel and then other people feel like other people are judging you like I said give a lot of grace because I know that in that profession they see a lot of things and it becomes you become a little jaded um but it was just it was heartbreaking to already feel that you you have the judgment on yourself but then feeling like somebody else is judging you for your reaction um it was very very hard Mm -hmm. Well, and I think you guys spoke to something like you said, and, and you kind of opened up with this, is like, you know what's inside, right? Every single one of us, whether it's this experience or another, we all have things in our life that are hidden. And it's one thing when we know where they're hidden because we put them there, right? They're neat, they're compact, they're hidden where we want them to be hidden. But then when someone gets close to that, right? When someone gets close to that, it's like, oh, oh, no. And like you said, it was a wave of emotions because you've been here, you've done this. I, I, I want to be excited, but I don't know that I can be. And so what I would love for you guys to, to do is just to take a minute, and you can each share this, it doesn't matter. Um, what was that grief journey like? Because it's stretched over years, right? So to take some time to describe what that's been like for you guys. Um, and I, I guess I would say... Even to, to back it up before mm -hmm. what Kaylee was talking about, um, we dealt with our grief very differently, um, and we didn't talk about it at first. Um, we've grown a lot in our, in our marriage through this journey and, and closer to God as a result of a lot of the things that we've gone through. Um, but at first, like I said, we kind of took it intellectually and said, um, you know, this is part of statistics. There's nothing different about us. And then, and then the second and third loss, um, I took it personally, and I I took it out on God, um, and I cursed him daily. Uh, we did not have a good relationship, um, and Kaylee didn't handle it that way. But that was that was all that I had at the time was I had, um, I knew I served a God that could intervene and I didn't know in this case why he wouldn't. We see so many kids, so many parents that don't want their kids. Kaylee worked in a NICU where, um, you know, some of those stories of w the life that these kids have to go back to and why couldn't a family like ours be allowed to continue to grow. Um, and so the breaking point for me, I think, was after the third loss. After the third loss, um, I wasn't cursing God anymore. I turned my back on him. 
And I said, we may deal with each other on other things, but this isn't something I'm going to put my faith in you for anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it was a pretty dark time. I mean, we started going down um, a very difficult path in our marriage because even though we weren't talking about it like we should be and healthily, uh, in a healthy way should be, um, it, it started taking effect on um, my work, my home life, uh, really every aspect of me and, and a part that um, doesn't get talked about and we won't talk about in depth but mm -hmm. it takes a part on your, a hard part on your intimacy mm -hmm. because um, the bedroom which is a place where God intended so much joy um, and an intimacy between a couple was now a place of fear and disappointment and and a lot of a lot of hurt and so that continued to separate us as a couple. Mm -hmm. um, and then as we went into the, um, the fourth loss, we, we became part of this church. Mm -hmm. And so part of our answer was um, from God was, you need community to help you through this. And so we found this church, we found authentic relationships because we've been in church before mm -hmm. but we haven't been in a church where you're allowed to be messy um, and you're allowed to not have your veil on and your mask on when you come in the door um, and so we started finding relationships with people that were authentic that were messy going through struggles and sharing life together um, and even though we had this going on in our background of our story uh, we got to share in life with other people and it helped us open up um, and that was one of my proudest moments of Kaylee throughout this is that she opened up to start sharing our story um, and she has such an eloquent, eloquent way with words that um, it really impacted a lot of people um, and then it brought us back into our journey with God together. Well, And, and you said something again in, in your blog is I was never angry with God but you talked about how you didn't really pay much attention and you kind of felt like a sidebar in his story. So he was kind of a sidebar in your story. So can you, can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I have kind of a complicated relationship with, um, I guess really more so religion, um, since childhood. And so I think I was so concerned about not making God my genie that I had left him out of it completely didn't blame him, but I also didn't seek him either. It's just this kind of middle, down the road thing. And so I did, I mean, I really did feel like I'm just not really in that story, not in God's story. So, so we did handle it differently. Um, I was very, and you know, our coping strategies were different. Um, mine was knowledge and kind of health. So if I could know all the things, if I could be as healthy as possible, then I can control it, um, leaving God completely out of it, um, because it has to be something with me. I have to fix it, um, which I'm grateful for all the knowledge that I learned. I learned things that I probably should have known. <laughs> um, so, But at the same time, over time, you realize that none of that is giving you peace. None of that is helping you cope. It's just a way for you to have the control when you really should be seeking God and how to have that peace. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if that's what you... Yeah, yeah. And so I, I think that hits two different dynamics. I think for some of us, right, we long for that control. We pursue it because, like she just said, if, if I can lay A, B, C, D, E out, nothing will get in the way. And then on the flip side of that, I think I, this is where I resonate. I was with... Cody, you said I could not rationalize how or why he would allow good to happen in some people's lives, but not in my life. And so you have these opportunities where we try to control, 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 or we just, and if you were here in week one, Brett talked about this, like, hey, I, I've shown up, I've tried these things, I've done it your way, when in reality, we know we haven't, but that's what we feel like. And we're like, so I'm done, right? And, and I think that it's a unique experience that you guys both got to experience that and it was so different, right? And as you guys know, 
Anytime that you face loss, we all do things differently, right? Grief hits everyone in such a different way. And so I think it's, it's something that every single one of us can relate to because we've all lost something or someone, a relationship, a loved one, um, somebody that we cared deeply for. And when we know God can, right, it's easy for us to pass that test. Is God good? Yes. Okay, well, let's jump in a ship, fast forward your life to when you go through the greatest pain you've ever went through, and God asks you that same question. Am I still good? And we would all like to say, yes, I would answer that question, yes, yes, yes. But we're not there and we don't get to live that. And, he, and here's what I love about your guys' story and even tying it into Brett's story was because like, I turned my back on him and Kayla's like, I didn't even really acknowledge him. And we've been there, right? Like I, I've walked through seasons of my life without God. And there's been seasons where I'm like, I can do this. Chris and I talk about this all the time. Like, oh yeah, I did youth ministry for 15 years. I could write a youth. If I called Chris up on this stage right now and said, preach for me, I'm not here. Could you do it? Could he walk all the way up here, never praying one time, God speak through me and deliver a message that would impact us? Yes, but is that what we're called to do? No. And so often we get tied down to our own strength and, and we don't have that same desire, like you said, where I, I pursued control over Christ. And I think that was something that's so relatable to us. And so what I would love for you guys to do is talk about now how God kind of pulled you through this. You kind of touched on it a little bit um, with messy people. So thanks for being messy and not liars. That's permission, right? Don't be fake. We're not that kind of place. We're real. But talk about each of you, what God kind of taught you and how he pulled you through this journey. Um, Well, I guess I'll I'll go back to um, where I left off. And so dark place at the end of the third miscarriage um, into the fourth, we, we found our community, we found friends and, um, and so we, we got pregnant again and, and we turned to our community. We shared that with them. We got excited again. Um, and when we went in for our ultrasound visit, we were texting, um, everybody here that we were close with and said, pray for us. We're going into this. This is still hard. This is still a place of so much hurt. And so we go in for the fourth, and again, it's, it's with loss. But when we came out, we had a community to fall back on. Um, and we started opening up to each other uh, to allow it to be okay to talk about and work through together. Um, and so we started finding healing in our marriage. Um, and then we really put a lot of focus back into serving others and serving God and we got pregnant again and this time it felt completely different because it's like okay we went through this extremely difficult journey and now we're finally in the place where we should be as a marriage uh, in marriage we're we're a strong united couple that talks and works through difficult things together uh, we're involved in our in our church community and and serving and pouring into others as others pour into us. And we had just went to a, a marriage retreat and we were feeling so strengthened um, by this community. God literally put hundreds, if not a thousand people around us um, praying for us and with us over this pregnancy. Um, and then Kaylee gets that feeling in the pit of her stomach again and says, Cody, I can't wait till this next ultrasound. We need to go. Um, we need to go get this checked out because I have that feeling of dread. Um, and so we did, and and sure enough, when the ultrasound came up, there was no heartbeat again. And and this was where you talked about the expectation of God, on, that we put on God is now we've done everything right. Now we've we've brought you into this with us, God. How could you forsake us again? Um, but it was different because with the loss, there was a feeling in that room of absolute and utter peace, a peace that Kaylee says surpasses all understanding. Um, 
So God was with us. Mm -hmm. He was with us the whole time, but we didn't acknowledge his presence. And then finally, when we surrendered everything to him, even though the pain was the same, the hurt was the same, um, we knew we were not alone. And it, it gave us, um, Jason Baker, it gave me a, uh, even though he didn't know the impact this would make on my life, he gave me a recommendation to listen to a guy named Tim Keller. Mm -hmm. And so I listen to that guy um, all the time. I've got long commutes to work, as many of you know, and so I get a lot of, get a lot of listening in, get a lot of prayer time in. Um, but Tim Keller has a, a series on suffering. And in that series, he, he says, as a pastor, everyone comes to him in moments of suffering, and they ask why. They ask the same ask questions that we were asking. Why us? Why does God allow this to happen? And the truth is, you can read throughout the whole Bible, you can talk to any preacher on the planet, there is no answer. You're not going to find an answer to that question. But... He says there is something that it isn't. It isn't that God doesn't care. Mm -hmm. It isn't that God is indifferent. Or else Jesus would have never came. Because no other deity, no other God that is served out there went through suffering. Yet God, through Jesus, um, came and suffered for us. Uh, suffered incredible loss and hurt and pain and though we don't know what the answer is for suffering, mm -hmm. we know that it isn't that God doesn't care about us, um, that he wasn't able to suffer with us mm -hmm. and for us. Yeah, and I think, <clears throat> I think that hits a big point that I don't want to brush over before we move on is how many, and you don't have to raise your hands to this, but how many of us have done that same thing where we put these expectations on God, right, where we've cleaned ourselves up a little bit where we started to do all the right things kind of like I don't know if you guys did this but I used to treat my parents and I was smarter than the average kid so I didn't ask my mom for the thing right before I wanted it I buttered her up you know preheated the oven like two weeks before I started cleaning up my shoes I started folding the laundry the right way because we would fold it wrong on purpose so she would stop asking right and, and I would do all these things and I'd be like hey Mom, in a couple of days, so and so is doing this, and I would love to go. And, and you know what she would do? She would think back. Well, golly, he's he's behaved pretty good, and he's picked up the house without asking. He's done these things, and so I got this yes. And so that taught me the same thing with God. I was like, well, if if I just start praying more, and if I, you know, I'm reading a few verses, so maybe this day I'll read a whole chapter, or maybe this day while I'm in the car, instead of listening to music, I'll just listen to. Um, Darth Vader's voice, read me the Bible so it's extra spiritual. You know, James Earl Jones, I couldn't think of his name. Sorry. Sorry. And so I started doing all of these things, trying to stack up, stack up, stack up. And then I could cash all my chips and like, hey, God, let me tell you what I've been doing for two weeks. And I forgot that God's not a God that's moved by our transactional love, right? Scripture says he's the same yesterday, today. And forever, right? And so I would come to him and I would have the same thing like you talked about, like, God, I'm doing all these things. Can you just give me this one thing? But then I, I, I remember this and, and you guys, maybe you're here, but think through your life how many answers you got to prayers you never prayed. And it's, we never think like that. We think, man, I asked for this one thing. I asked for this one thing. I asked for this one thing and we never got it. But if you stop, like you leave here today, get out a piece of paper, kick it old school, and write how many unprayed answers you have in your life right now. It's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And like, and like Cody said, right, we can take heart. Why? Jesus said, there's going to be trouble, right? Don't, don't believe the lie that that's not coming. But I have overcome. And then my favorite promise of Jesus is, I am with you always, right? I am with you always. Always, and you guys kind of touched on this. Um, you guys got this unexpected gift, Kaylee said, peace that passes all understanding. And so I would love for you, maybe rewind a little bit, but talk about what it was like to experience that peace um, when it had been absent for such a long time. Um, I guess maybe to back up, because I know you talked about um, kind of how you felt through all of it, but with the prayer life. So when I talked about that wasn't really there because I didn't want God, I didn't want to 
you know, use them as a genie type thing. And what's funny is how it kind of twisted on its head because whenever we started praying more and my prayer life ramped up and we were having more people pray for us and it was almost like I went into that mode of, oh, maybe this will work, maybe this will work. And I got, like, excited. And then when the peace comes in is all of that prayer just started linking me um, to God and having that different perspective. And that's where, you know, the that prayer life is what it's for. It's like, it's changing your perspective on how life is, how God is, how, who he is, what his character is. And so that's where the peace comes in when the suffering is the same. And yes, I, I prayed for there to be something different and different outcome. But when I didn't get that prayer answer, quote unquote, I did though, because that peace was there because I was praying, because I was linked, because I was feeling more, with him and that I was part of his story too. Um, that's, I, I, I don't know how else to describe it other than that, that yeah. it just changed and shifted the perspective. So for sure. You, you said this out. I, I like this. You wrote in your blog that it felt nice to let go of shame, to let go of guilt and you allowed community to be what it was designed to do. Mm-hmm. And then piggybacking off Cody, that opened up the door with one thing and it was being vulnerable. And so could you share, it doesn't have to be a long one, but share just for a second what that vulnerability looked like and maybe what it cost you, but what it got you. Um, So I am very, it's very hard for me to be vulnerable. He'll tell you that. Um, We got some amens to that. I know some (laughs) of you secret keepers out there. Um, And it's one of those, this is such a, a weird kind of grief and I did want to touch on this a little bit, is you have to be almost extra vulnerable because if it's a grief that if you wanted to keep it hidden, you could. It's, you know, if you lose any other kind of loss, everybody kind of knows about it. And so they can kind of pull you in to grief and say, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. But with this kind of loss, unless you want people to know, you can do it on your own. And so it's extra vulnerable to have to reach out and say, I'm struggling because we've had a loss, we've had a miscarriage. And then you almost feel, you don't want people to feel like you're trying to get attention or it's just a very hard, it's a different kind of grief. And, um, but it's worth the vulnerability to have that community behind you because there's no magic words to say, there's nothing that makes it better, but just knowing that they're there for you, that if you need to reach out or just, show up to your house randomly, which meant the world to me. Um, it's, it's definitely worth it. But I will say with this kind of grief, it definitely takes an extra set, extra step of vulnerability that I wasn't quite, quite ready for until I'd say this last one would be when I was fully vulnerable. So, I don't know. <coughs> um, I don't know if I have much to add to that. Um, it, Um, Like I said in the beginning, um, my whole life in church, I I was able to hide behind a mask and um, project what I wanted people to see. And um, this is one of the biggest things that didn't allow me to do that, and I'm so grateful for it. Mm -hmm. Um, I was grateful for us to um, allow ourselves to open up and let other people in and and experience God through that, uh, experience God through other people. Um, because those people that were praying, those people that, that showed up, um, that's how we saw him. That's mm-hmm. how we um, knew that we weren't in it alone and that God was in it with us. I got you. Um, before I let you guys do this last thing, Kaylee said something again in one of her blogs, and I think it's super relatable to this. Um, and I'll, it'll be up on the screen behind me, but it said, faith is easy until life gets hard, right? Faith is easy until life gets hard. And she had <clears throat> lots of wisdom, as Cody said, but she wrote this. She said, I didn't go through this because I needed to be closer to God. God didn't rip five children away so that I would draw closer. But in that pain, I found who he was. It's hard, it's imperfect, and nothing about this will ever make sense. But faith got me and will continue to get me through the hard. And and here's something that I, I want to say 
that that is super encouraging for this type of loss, but then to each and every one of us, right? I, I was reading and studying and doing different things, and, and there's a few pastors who have been through this who, who lost um, babies and children and different things, and they said specifically about miscarriage, he said, the thing that gets me through, the thing that strengthens my faith, right? Because faith is easy until it gets hard. He said, is every day I'm one step closer to meeting my son or meeting my daughter. And he said, and I can't imagine that when I get to heaven, I get to hear a voice for the very first time that says, welcome home, mom. Welcome home, dad. And guys, I've never experienced loss like this. But I know countless others who have. And to walk through that kind of pain, to experience that kind of joy, that's the same joy that you and I get to offer to people when we share our story so that they can hear Jesus say, welcome home, and you fill in the blank. And so I, 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 can, I cannot do anything but rejoice at the moment that you get to experience. And I don't know if this is a weird thing to say, but I sure hope that I'm on that side of heaven when you get to experience that. I don't know if there's cell phones and cameras, but I feel like that would be a viral TikTok if there was ever one, right? Just to hear those voices for the first time and, and to see how much they know you because in scripture, we know the verse that's quoted all the time, Psalm 139, right? I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You knit me together in my mother's womb. And so what I love about that verse in the context of this grief is it says, you know me, you've seen me. And if you look, I, I, I didn't put it up here, I apologize. But you look at verse 16, you can look it up, but it, it talks about God ordaining all the days of your life. And what does that look like? And how does that comprehend on a child that I never got to meet? And it's like, hey, you are providing my son or my daughter with a perfect home that I could have never provided. You are loving them with a perfect love that I could never love. And I am happy to trust you to do exactly what your word says until I get to be reunited with them again in the new heaven and the new earth, and we get to experience that relationship forever. And so that is something that, I, I don't know, that will stick with me forever, is, is the joy that you guys will get to experience not once, not twice, but five times. Um, I don't want you to experience it soon. Um, I want you to stay here for a little while longer a lot while longer, but I can't wait for you guys to experience that. And so as we wrap this up, I know you, you put some things up here, but what would you want to share? Like your last little bit, there's, I think there's five or six things. So if this is you, if you've experienced this kind of loss, this specific type of pain or grief in any other way, I think what Cody and Kaylee have to say is, is worth you hearing. And so if you will just hear these last few things as we wrap up um, this time together. I highlighted well, them green so you could, you could remember. <laughs> and, and before we get into that, I, I wanted to share what you call a God hug. Yep. I, I've started calling it that recently here too. But um, to conclude our story, so after that last loss and, and all the people that gathered around us and showed us God, we had our own closure um, by uh, Kaylee wears a necklace routinely that has um, five wings on it and then a, an emerald for Mila's birthstone. Um, and so we took the pairing to those five wings and we planted it under a dogwood tree. And dogwoods represent rebirth, they represent hope. And so... Um, whether it was coincidence or whether it was God, I'll believe it's God. Uh, when that dogwood bloomed, it bloomed with five blooms. Um, and that, that gave me such peace um, to get to, to pray over that plant and know that I've got five children in heaven waiting for mm -hmm. us. And that's, what, that's where we are now. So I went from not acknowledging it was God to cursing God to turning my back on God to now saying... God, how are my kids today? Mm -hmm. um, and it's 
it's been so incredibly peaceful to to do exactly what you just said is to stop thinking about the loss here and the expectation the ex expectancy of of what we'll get to experience in heaven when we finally get to meet them um, but um, to get into the to the five things that we wanted um, everybody to um, kind of take from this um, is miscarriage is real loss it's uh, it seemed like throughout this we experienced um, a lot of people don't acknowledge it as real loss or they just give you this suck it up buttercup um, it wasn't a real life that you lost uh, that's not true it's just as emotional um, there's, there's just as much loss there and you should never be dismissed and silenced um, share your story because other people are feeling that same thing uh, men struggle too it's okay um, to show that vulnerability to other people um, uh, it, even though it's not the same level that a, that a woman experiences loss there's this part of being a man where you want to protect your wife and it's something that you can't do now you want to protect your unborn child and you you don't have control over those things and it so it it rips a piece of you away that is innate to a man and it's okay to to not be okay um, we're messy people yep. it's okay to be messy um, so share that with other people um, your messy story because that may be something that they're struggling with too um, and then the, the final thing is we continue to struggle um, there's no summit to this mountain until we get to heaven so we may have even more loss that we experience in the future we may not we don't know what that looks like um, but God is with you is for you and allow him to be there and his grace to be there and receive his grace um, and I guess the last thing I'll say is um, I relate a lot of my story to to Job and it gives me comfort not because all that Job uh, struggled with in the Bible not because I compare his loss to my loss but what I compare is is Job complained throughout the entire however many chapters that is it's a long book um, and he cursed God but in the end God showed up and said you are my servant um, and I think the reason is because he didn't stop talking to him. I, I think I think we put um, too much taboo on you. you can't question or share pain with God. God wants that. He wants you to be authentic. Um, and the only part of my story that I have shame about is when I finally turned my back on God. But when I was mad at him um, and wanted him to do things differently, there's nothing wrong with that. You're allowed to have expectations on your father. We all do. Um, and he has reasons and um, that we will never be able to understand. One day we will. Um, but it's not in us to understand now. Um, but it's okay to share that pain with him because he wants to be there with you through it. Mm -hmm. Got anything to add? Thanks, great. <laughs> He's the speaker of the family. Yeah, yeah. So um, what we're going to do is, th this is a, such a unique thing because Cody and Kaylee are, are newly passionate about sharing this story. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to pray for them and, and welcome you to join us. But then um, it's, it's funny that he talks about Job. We're going to sing a song that's inspired by the book of Job. He didn't know that. He had no idea that that was happening. Um, and, and it's a song that we sang a couple weeks ago called Though You Slay Me, Yet I Will Praise You. And, I, and maybe today you just sit and you think about those words coming from the mouth of someone who's lost so much. Because like he said, Job, Job goes on for chapters and chapters and chapters. Right, of asking so many questions, so many questions. God, where were you? Where were you? And God shows up. 
despite all of the questions, right? All of the doubt, all of the friends speaking negatively into his life, and God shows up, and God shows up, and God shows up. And so what Cody and Kaylee want to do is if, if you've experienced this type of loss, they want to pray with you, right? If you've experienced any type of loss, they want to pray with you. If you just want somebody to pray with you, you guessed it. They want to pray with you. And so after we pray, the band's going to come back up, and Cody and Kaylee are going to be right here and, and welcome you to come up and pray with them, to pray for them, and um, let's see what God does when we, as Kaylee put, allow community to do what community can do. Amen.